Okay, everyone, good evening. I hope you're all excited today because today is the day that we are gonna grow as leaders. Now we're gonna discuss leadership techniques to help you and your organization grow. Jack Welch, the CEO of General Electric, which is a very well-known company, said, and I quote, before you're a leader, success is all about growing yourself. When you become a leader, success is about growing others. Now, how are we going to do this? First, we're going to discuss innovation in leadership. Then, we will discuss team familiarity, which is keeping your team intact, keeping your team together, keeping your team a team. Then, we'll discuss creating a harmonious environment for your team, creating happy, happy employees. Now, innovation leadership. In order to move forward in your thinking and problem solving, you must be able to approach leadership innovatively. So, innovative leadership, the first concept is an innovative approach to this. You must be able to think differently. You must be able, as a leader, to approach these challenges and workflows in a different way. Then, once you have that, you'll be able to lead for innovation. And this concept means to lead others to think differently about challenges and situations and various workflows. And how are we going to do all this? We will apply innovative thinking skills. There are four main innovative thinking skills. The first one is pay attention. Pay attention to the details. It's the little things. By noticing the little things, you'll be able to see the big picture. This will increase your scope of knowledge and understanding of the situation. Next is personalize. Find ways to personalize an experience so that others are able to work collaboratively and comfortably. Personalizing as in getting to know people, getting to know their likes and dislikes, their weaknesses, their strengths. Getting this will, you'll gain a deeper understanding of a person and it'll make it more of an experience rather than a simple work encounter. It breaks the routine, it breaks things up, it keeps people engaged. In addition, Another way to keep people engaged is to use imagery. And this can be seen as either uh, concrete or abstract. Take a really complex idea and use a picture, diagram, move around, use it to supplement what you're explaining. Make a complex situation easy to understand with a picture so it supplements it. In addition, you can always use stories or anecdotes Create mental imagery. Creating a mental imagery makes a more memorable experience. A more memorable experience in addition to that is a thing called serious play, which is a contradiction, but serious play is when you're at work, which can be very rigorous and very routine, you do things in a non-traditional way. You use a ball and pass it around to gain ideas. By doing this, you gain spontaneity. You start to innovate. You start to think differently. Um, it's a freedom of expression, testing boundaries, experimenting. And with that, new ideas come, innovative ideas come, new approaches, and innovative way of thinking. And that's how we'll accomplish that. Another aspect to growing in leadership is to understanding this concept of team familiarity. You must have a team in order to lead them in innovative thinking. Team familiarity is so important. You must keep your team together. Now, the 
was a study done by University of Oxford professor David Upton. He conducted a study of over a thousand projects being done with over 11,376 employees. And with that, he discovered something. With a 50% increase in team familiarity, that resulted in a 19% decrease in mistakes, a 30% decrease in budget usage, and a 10% increase in work performance. An increase in work performance. And how can you make this happen for your team? And what are the benefits of team familiarity? There are five examples in which team familiarity can work for you. The first one is coordinating activities between team members. It's the process of how or when a team communicates these processes. The longer a team is together, the easier it will be for them to get to the point of coordinating activities, making uh, communication more fluid. There's more coordination. It's gears, putting gears together and making it work fluidly. Next is learning knowledge lies. Knowledge lies are what someone knows and what someone doesn't know. So let's say, for example, you need a project to be done and you know that one person is very creative and one person really isn't. But this project calls for a more creative approach. Instead of wasting time discussing between these two people, you immediately know after working with them for a very long period of time that you must go to this person for creative. That makes it more efficient. So as a result, a team is able to more easily respond to change. They are able to work more fluidly in that rigid situation. Sometimes jobs can be very stressful. A lot of jobs can in some instances. And if you have fluidity and you know the people that you're working with, you're gonna be able to work more efficiently, proficiently, and produce more. And that's what we want. We want success in business. But we also want the workers to be able to coordinate well and make it efficient. So in addition to that, by integrating the knowledge of a group of people who work together, new ideas can be uh, created. To collaborate ideas, to more easily communicate ideas, are, is an exchange of better collaboration and the potential to create something bigger and better. A collaboration of ideas serves to support a single idea. So you have one idea. And if you're working with someone, you're comfortable with someone, you're able to communicate more effectively and more comfortably. And with that comes an expounding well of knowledge and creativity. And that also goes back to innovative thinking. So team familiarity plus innovative thinking can create something really, really great. So and with this team familiarity, with this collaboration, with being able to work fluidly and responding to change, knowing knowledge eyes and coordinating um, activities we capture the value of a group, of an organization. In comparison to a team without high familiarity, they may have a single man, only one single member that has strong characteristics. The collective abilities of a team with high familiarity is a much stronger team. As Gestalt said, and I quote, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Keeping a team together, keeping it whole, we together as a team can create something better and bigger than just one single person. The old adage goes, there is no I in team. And with that, we must create a harmonious work environment. We gotta keep Happy employees tend to stay at their jobs longer, so there's a decrease in turnover rate, less, less expense in training new employees, 
a greater familiarity which leads to better teamwork. The success of your business depends on the people that work every day to make the business run, and leadership is where it begins. How is this accomplished? Have a culture, have a culture that allows employees to be themselves. Encourage growth, and then provide the tools for this success in the workplace. First concept is allowance of employees to be themselves. There is a company called Zappos, and they're very well known for being one of the best companies to work for. And one of the, the aspects is comfort. They have, on Fridays, they can dress comfortably. They don't have to wear rigid clothes. And this creates um, a more genuine connection between coworkers. Um, personalization of their office workspace. This relaxed working environment allows employees to be themselves and feel comfortable. More collaboration, more teamwork. This company, again, who was deemed in the top rankings of Fortune's best companies to work for in 2013, um, they have a program where employees organize and showcase uh, talents at a company presentation. They can participate in uh, shadow sessions which allows them to see other parts of the company and to make connections with other people in other departments. This engages employees and sparks new interest in a job that, may, that they may have already been in for a long time already. It breathes new life into something routine. This keeps employees engaged. This is so, so important. Break from the routine and let it breathe. Let it be something that you love to do. Everyone wants, always talks about loving what you do. It, when you love what you do, when you love what you do, it doesn't feel like work. So love what you do and express yourself. Encourage growth and provide the, and have the tools for success. Finally, all this information about leadership is meant to help managers grow as leaders so they may help their team flourish. As previously mentioned, a happy team, work, a happy team equals successful businesses. Above all, this growth comes from the innate need to pursue happiness. As work is a large part of one's life, it cannot be taken for granted that, to be, that time be good for both personal need and success in business. Be innovative and press forward. Innovative leadership. Keep the team together and create team familiarity in order to work more efficiently and work more fluidly. Culminate all these leadership techniques to create a harmonious work environment. Continue on the pursuit of happiness. Now good leadership begins and ends with a desire to produce something Besides the obvious reason of leading a team to accomplish a certain business goal, the more important change that happens with good leadership is the ability to help others be the best people they can be. And let me conclude by saying that everyone has to start from the very beginning. Typically, success doesn't happen overnight. Like any living thing on this earth, it has to be nourished, and it has to be nurtured, and it has to grow in order to be something great. Now with these skills and desire to help others grow, the success of your organization will naturally flourish and grow.